Hello everyone. We will discuss about various perspectives around sustainability in this lecture. So uh, I have taken this uh, actually uh, graph. It talks about uh, sustainability at uh, multi-level perspective. So it has taken actually as you can see on the left side uh, four aspects on which it is uh, trying to draw an illustration like how sustainability evolves over time how sustainability interacts with the uh, different like uh, agents okay and these uh, like uh, aspects which are on the left side okay there is an interaction also happening between them over the factor of like time so as i said uh, earlier sustainability is a dynamic concept sustainability actually interacts okay with the context on the site uh, of the site sustainability actually uh, uh, there are factors which interact with the other like of uh, factors okay and in turn the result with something okay result uh, uh, in certain ways okay based on that result several new things actually born so it's a whole actually a uh, systemic actually uh, an, uh, an activity where uh, there is a actually a progression based on the interaction between the factors so if we see the whole ecosystem of like uh, this planet so we as uh, we humans as a species have become a very important actually stakeholder so here uh, with the actually pace at which we have taken our growth and uh, development other like a uh, like activities to satisfy our needs okay and uh, we have taken different ways of like uh, creating our habitation over here uh, okay sourcing our food from here sourcing and meeting our different other types of needs over here so that has taken a toll that we have already discussed so we have become a very important actually stakeholder in this ecosystem apart from us well of course the natural balance uh, of this uh, planet is one of the things but it has uh, actually certain uh, uh, we can call it as like a universal actually principles of like how elements are going to behave in the given circumstances so for example how water is going to behave okay on a given temperature water will be have in certain way on the other given temperature water will be have will be have in some some other ways and the kind of like resources whatever we are sourcing they are all lying around in this nature okay whether it is uh, like a man made objects like plastics whether it is like a, a steel whether it is like a glass so most of these actually elements are existing in the like a uh, natural actually uh, environment okay in this nature but uh, uh, most of our like a new creations which are uh, like a polymers you know and several other like a composite materials and things okay they are very useful their application is very specific okay they actually uh, uh, give us desired actually uh, abilities like uh, through which we can actually perform certain functions we can uh, we utilize them into our uh, like a daily lives like for example like there are several like, a, uh, like a, for example uh, electronics so electronics actually uh, consumes a lot of like a, a metals you know precious metals you know rare earth metals you know several types of actually metals so some of them are like a uh, not so bad for the environment but some of them are really bad for like a uh, the normal like life like us and other living beings we actually extract those animals from the nature so wherever they are currently okay they are lying in a kind of a unreactive state okay mostly well not all but most of them are lying in an unreactive unharming actually state we actually uh, collect them we actually create a concentrated form of them okay we change their like chemical com composition okay we actually bring them into like a certain form of like a, uh, a compound okay and that compound actually uh, carries certain characteristics which are not so good for the environment and that is where the whole problem actually starts so even if we are able to meet our certain needs by using them but they are not so good for the environment so uh, as we can see over here on these uh, like a four uh, uh, like uh, aspects of like a time landscape socio technical regime and niches so uh, how this uh, actually the uh, sustainability actually moves sustainability actually flows around actually these steps well time is an universal factor okay so time is always uh, like a uh, moving ahead time has like a certain effects and things change over time so that's actually generic principle even uh, this nature okay it has not been into this exact form for like a forever okay this has been uh, transforming itself into like a this for a very long time okay 
the there is a that time span of this actually balance okay being there that is in like a lakhs of years and millions of years so there have been a, like a cycles of like a such like a phenomena on the planet earth and uh, this uh, this uh, this actually current phase is also part of actually that cycle and we are currently at this present stage so the question arises if there is any disturbance then what will happen but anyways so on your on the landscape if you see the landscape uh, on this actually aspect okay things move in like a, of course the forward direction so landscape actually developments exert pressure on the regime which thereby opens up in different dimensions and creates opportunities for new technologies and practices so the, with the landscape here we mean the context of uh, like uh, the applications and uses of like a uh, things and the uh, goods and materials and uh, techniques so for them actually we develop certain technologies for example i just spoke we ex extract some certain minerals and certain metals okay to utilize them for like certain purposes okay so that is a very uh, very specific actually need and for which actually we create actually certain technologies okay and practices to use them okay so this actually also gives a, a, a kind of a boost to like how the sustainability is going to be like okay so it it always carries a, like a an influencing actually role and uh, from here only as you can see this uh, green dotted line okay so this is uh, connecting to this uh, uh, niches uh, aspect so this talks about external impacts on niches so via expectations and networks so what is happening like uh, in the context we we discussed earlier there is always an uh, like uh, two types of like a uh, local and external so uh, local and external so local is very very like a uh, rooted to that place so for example like a vernacular architecture so the vernacular architecture is a, a form of architecture which is rooted to a place okay so it has evolved at that place which is rooted at that place it uses the climatology it uses the resources like for example the types of like a trees available okay the types of like a bushes and grass available over there like for example we see like these thatch houses and mud houses so they do not actually bring their resources the the, the construction material from elsewhere okay they gather up resources from the place itself and just build the house okay so that is one very strong and major characteristics of an architecture uh, like a vernacular architecture if you go to rajasthan you will see architecture in stone if you go to assam you will see a lot of like a use of like a mud and bamboo and thatch if you go to like a, a southern states like for example like a kerala you will see a lot of again like a timber based uh, this thing and a lot of like a pitched roofing because that place actually experiences a lot of like rain so these things are very very local but if you see the external actually part of uh, uh, this like a context so the like a human behavior human practices the cultural values they actually uh, spread on a like a larger footprint okay so they go like a uh, they they overlap between like a uh, di different states of like today's time so how these things also have a uh, like a uh, some uh, effect like how the architecture in the southern india india as a whole has evolved over time okay so there are uh, major such things they actually also influence it uh, on the sustainability parameters on the third one if you hear you see there are several like a uh, small small uh, uh, actually uh, uh, terms given over here like uh, uh, for example uh, industry science culture you know market market and user preferences policy and technology well uh, all of these have certain bearing on the evolution of like a material culture and product culture on any given place okay on the overall sustainability because the product culture itself is responsible for like a uh, the uh, like a sustainability it is a uh, directly related with the sustainability how it's going to be so there in this region if you see there is an interplay okay there is an interplay they are they are actually moving between one to another they are shaping each other you know they are influencing each other and they are turning into a new actually you know geometry all together so the geometry which started from here and geometry which turned out here is different okay so that is actually the game of time actually on which like how things evolve how things shape each other how things get shaped by the other stakeholders by the other agents by the other factors so this is uh, how actually we are uh, uh, we are landing towards a new region which influences the landscape okay so with the combination of like such if there, if there is a change observed in any of these okay so there will be a change a major change possible on on the overall result okay but that also depends there may be a big change 
against a small change or there may be a small change against a big change okay there may be a no change there may be a sudden different kind of change or there may be a something where a new happening altogether so this is like a unpredictable this is uh, unpredictable on the like a, like a how things go but yes in the today's time of like a research and development uh, the scientist and uh, as a sustainability science okay we are studying this phenomena like a how how things actually evolve over time and what are the changes if we exert in one domain so how it's going to result the other domains okay and that is the whole actually scientific uh, study around like sustainability and it is being predicted ki, like all of these like carbon emissions and things which we are uh, discussing okay they are interrelated with here okay so if we if, if, if we uh, keep uh, actually exerting a lot of like a footprint okay so how it's going to evolve like okay how the whole scenario of this planet is going to be like okay so those are the actually things which are uh, being tried to actually from uh, this uh, diagram to explain okay let's go to this uh, the last one the niches this talks about like minor networks of actors support innovations on the basis of expectations and visions learning processes take place at different dimensions okay the next one elements are connected and stabilized in a dominant design the internal momentum increases the th the last one the new configuration breaks the uh, through using uh, windows of opportunity this is coupled with broader adjustments in the socio technical region so in this one if you see there is a lot of like a small small actually multi directional uh, factors which are like moving forward okay so these are actually uh, like a small small like a networks of like a uh, actors who actually affect the overall like a system okay so as we have seen in the system mapping and like a system design exercise okay these small small actors and agents they also are play to shape uh, uh, like uh, the, the final uh, uh, final actually you know outcome of like uh, any like uh, you know any system so uh, this is very important to understand actually these uh, also like what kind of influences it will be so this is finally helping to shape the final uh, uh, actually regime like how it's going to be like let's move on okay and uh, in this slide there are uh, some actually uh, uh, observations i would like to bring to your notice so there are actually two actually graphs on uh, like uh, this slide so the first one actually talks about the state of the world so let's just see the first one state of the world in the state of the world it is being observed the resources okay they are falling down you see this graph this uh, actually line okay so the resources are falling down because the resources the amount of resources is finite okay and uh, there has been a tremendous actually rate at which uh, at which these resources have been consumed in the last like uh, uh, several decades and last like uh, two centuries okay so this is going down the next one the the line of this population is of course increasing this is the base year like a 2000 this is 1900 and this is a projected year 2100 so this population is of course rising okay it's rising rising with the like a help of persistent efforts from like a different uh, governments and agencies and uh, like a uh, health sector it is being projected that population may start coming down in the like a next uh, like a 50 years okay so well uh, we are already here at uh, 2020 okay and then it's going to increase even further around the year of 2035 to 40 it is being projected okay that it may start actually going down gradually but well it is still unknown it is just a projection so how successful uh, these efforts will be that uh, we are yet to see but anyways it is being projected that it's going to come down which is a good sign okay but on the contrary pollution if you see it's increasing exponentially and it's going high and high and high okay in the last lecture we discussed like uh, how the several big economies and countries they have pulled out of the like a uh, platforms where uh, the governments actually take this commitment to reduce the overall like a uh, ecological footprints okay so they are pulling out that means they are not ready to cooperate to save on these uh, actually uh, uh, factors so in turn it's very very direct and very very like uh, evident that pollution is going to like increase like ever exponentially which may actually create a catastrophic situation okay so and uh, yeah 
resources and food is like a coming down pollution is going up population is it is predicted that it may come down and industrial output is also projected that it's rising rising and it may come down well again it's a projection we will see let's go to the next uh, uh, actually table so here in this one we are talking about human welfare and footprint so in this one okay we are seeing this a human welfare index is rising this is year base year 2020 it may also come down which is not a good state of like affair because if that human welfare is going to come down that means like there will be miserable conditions for the humanity to see okay there may be short supply of food there may be short supply of like resources there may be short supply of like other recreational thing there may be short supply of like other critical resources like education you know or uh, habitation you know housing and other stuff so this is not a good actually state of affair, of affair. and uh, yeah so this is being actually if we combine these two actually graphs okay so we can conclude uh, that uh, with this actually uh, uh, the rate of the growth of like a, a population with the decline in the resources with the increasing like pop, uh, pollution okay the human welfare index is projected to suffer to take a toll in the next uh, like a 50 years or so so this may create actually imbalance this may create actually you know other uh, like a uh, uh, bad situations like civil war like a you know <clears throat> like a hunger based actually uh, uh, tolls may increase okay there may be uh, a dis displacement and migration happening in different like a uh, parts of the like a different countries okay people may be forced to move out of their actually places because of the you know the, uh, uh, climatic situations because of the actually uh, bad economics of that place you can industries may go down the overall livelihood may start like a suffer and all so these kind of actually uh, catastrophic events are actually uh, kind of uh, being uh, like a uh, uh, projected if it doesn't uh, they, they on the on these sides if we still continue to you know consume the resources at the same rate and if the pollution is going to you know keep rising on the same rate so these are the kind of uh, uh, projected events which we which the world may have to see tomorrow let's move on so why sustainability is so important that we should be bo bothered about it okay so if you see like uh, this slide okay it's not just the humans who are the habitants of this uh, actually planet is the different plants you know the different animals different birds you know all of them actually they are the equal stakeholders of this planet okay they all actually deserve they all actually need this planet for their survival okay so uh, why this situation is coming over here that uh, some of these plants and animals they are disappearing okay as a species they are vanishing from this planet because this planet is not any longer able to provide you know sustainable actually uh, uh, life condition for their existence so this becomes very questionable like what is the cause of it well as we can see post industrialization human society has caused a lot of like a uh, tremendous harm to the planet okay so there is a direct actually connection between the uh, development and uh, uh, like uh, the, the loss of the like uh, other uh, different species on this planet so it says as many as half may be gone by the end of this century This is really disastrous. Like there are several like uh, species which are at this brink of like a uh, uh, completely vanishing from this planet, as large as half of like uh, uh, this thing by the end of this century. Like a uh, two thousand, like uh, when when was the year like two thousand one hundred? We when we reach okay, so that year we may be witnessing a huge number of uh, actually species vanishing from uh, actually uh, this planet. So this is actually a very bad actually situation. How we are going to uh, deal with this situation? Okay. So uh, yeah. So and uh, it says like an Armageddon is approaching at the beginning of the uh, third millennium. But it is not the cosmic war and fiery collapse of mankind foretold in the sacred scriptures. It is the wreckage of the planet by an exuberantly uh, plentiful and ingenious humanity. Well, this is said by like a Wilson in year two thousand two. 
so this is all in the name of like growth and development okay which is creating such an havoc to the planet so what are the different actually uh, sustainability like a perspectives so there are five major ones we will uh, uh, see one by one the conventional economist perspective like uh, we have to maintain the equilibrium we have to maintain the balance and then the second one non environmental degradation perspective okay the third one integration perspective uh, that is encompassing the economic environmental and social aspects the fourth one intergenerational perspective and the fifth one holistic perspective that combines intergen uh, integ uh, integrational uh, and uh, intergenerational perspective so here uh, this talks about actually integrating the actually society integrating the actually different species and uh, uh, talking about the intergeneration that means like uh, not just this, this generation in which we are living okay for the future generations also okay and for actually uh, like a uh, handling like a uh, such situation united nations has come up with 17 sustainable development goals okay we know them generally as sdgs un sdgs so these are the 17 uh, actually sdgs which actually uh, are uh, uh, framed to cater to the different actually catastrophic situations which may occur for humans for like a different like a species of the like animals for like a birds for reptiles for aquatic life for like a vegetation okay for the like a, a resources of this planet for the natural elements of this planet for each and everything for, uh, from which actually this planet is composed of this biosphere is composed of actually these sdgs are trying to solve their problems through these 17 actually sdgs so these 17 sdgs are actually self sufficient to address any of uh, like a uh, you know sustainability related issues right now across the countries okay so it starts from the like a first one which talks about no poverty so no poverty as we can see like the bad economic situation of any uh, like an individual or any household is uh, uh, can cause actually a uh, toll on the future of the next generation because if that uh, family is not able to feed uh, properly to their like uh, uh, family members okay this malnourishment is going to cause uh, several like uh, disease situations okay for their like a uh, newborns for their like a uh, elderly you know for their like a uh, ladies in the house okay and the second one talks about like zero hunger even if uh, like a uh, humanity has uh, uh, developed so much in like a uh, recent times but there are still a very sizable number of people across like a different countries okay who are uh, still very uh, in a difficult situation to feed for themselves to fend for themselves they are not able to meet actually uh, two meals per day so uh, the, this number is still very huge so it puts a big question on all of this growth and development efforts and the economic like a uh, systems like how uh, well we are doing on like uh, these terms so yeah this zero hunger comes right next to it and it is one of the very important ones uh, the third one is about good health and well-being of course for maintaining a, a like a, a good life a good like a psychophysical condition okay we must have a good health and well-being okay not just physically even mentally so this has uh, taken an attention in the recent times to maintain the balance of like a physical as well as like a mental capacity of any human being the fourth one quality education well education has the potential that's uh, with the help of that one can uh, change their future they can change their actually livelihood they can uh, uh, get a better actually opportunity for like a uh, professional life for their occupational life you know for like a fending for themselves for like a, you know earning actually livelihood so education is an uh, uh, empowering actually agent in today's society and uh, it is proven but it is proven uh, with the like examples of like you and me in the society who have educated themselves and who are at least you know become usable for like you know as a usable resource for this actually society and that is why actually this uh, human resource must actually receive the quality education uh, the fifth one is uh, about the gender equality as a society we must be sensitive towards the uh, all of the like uh, you know our, uh, uh, members of our society whether they are the like uh, female members whether they are the uh, specially able like a uh, people you know so this uh, gender equality and this thing uh, is addressed by this one and uh, six one talks about like clean water and sanitation water is very important and there are n number of like diseases which born actually out of the uh, bad conditions of the water 
so this should be addressed and uh, there are several like a uh, countries which we have uh, seen in the like a uh, previous like a uh, lecture so they are not doing so good on the like a uh, uh, well-being of like a uh, humanity okay so in those countries especially uh, these water based diseases and uh, these uh, actually situations are very common the seventh one affordable and clean energy so that uh, well energy is the uh, prime a prime region for taking up any enterprise for doing any like a task these days so energy has become a very important but it should be clean so there is this focus of being it like clean so like a soul uh, it is in a kind of a shown through this graphic like a solar energy is considered uh, considered to be one of the clean ones so we should focus towards that those uh, 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 clean energy sources this eighth one talks about like decent work and economic growth so that everyone uh, gets like a uh, uh, opportunity of like a working opportunity of like a professional life so that they can uh, uh, register a kind of a economic growth for themselves and their families the next one the ninth it says about industry innovation and uh, infrastructure well for growth and development infrastructure is very important because uh, with the help of this infrastructure we create like our spaces for like habitation spaces for like our working spaces for like a manufacturing you know and uh, uh, etc so this is uh, important and the third or tenth one it talks about reduced inequalities inequalities means that everybody should be uh, considered at par with each other there should not be any uh, inequilibrium in the society nobody is bigger nobody is smaller okay everybody has the equal rights everybody should have should get the equal opportunities the 11th one talks about sustainable cities and communities so that all of these efforts are being uh, uh, done to create like a sustainable like you know habitation system sustainable like society sustainable communities where uh, we can interact with each other where we can live happily with each other where we can support each other along with being in the sync with the nature the 12th one responsible consumption and production so as we have seen like as the number of like a people are rising and as the like a consumerism is rising it is putting a lot of stress so we must put a check on uh, this actually consumption based uh, actually practices the 13th one talks about uh, uh, climate action well there is a lot of uh, uh, big effects like a uh, ghg emissions so greenhouse effect is happening global warming is happening these are the major scale actually uh, events which are the resultant of the uh, mindless actually uh, growth and development post like industrialization so we should uh, uh, establish our like a uh, practices to check the uh, effects which are happening due to the change in the like a uh, climatic patterns the fourth one talks about life below the water so one must not uh, ignore the aquatic life because uh, uh, these lives uh, are also very important equally important in the water like uh, how they are uh, actually supporting the life on the soil by being in the water is also like a, is, is proven by the like a scientific uh, like researches and all so uh, in the in the, on the land in the water okay in the air okay so land water and air in all these three actually uh, mediums so at the confluence of these three we have this biosphere where the life is actually possible so in the depths of the water or maybe in the extreme of the space or even in the deeper in the like a core of the earth there is no life possible or at least we do not know of it so the life which we know is uh, existing in the confluence of these three so we must protect actually these elements uh, so uh, even in the water to keep uh, actually alive these uh, different aquatic forms which cannot actually uh, come in and uh, claim their rights in front of us the fifteenth one talks about uh, uh, life on land. So of course, life on land is a, is also very important. We talked about in these two over here. Okay, and uh, the sixteenth one is like a peace, justice, and strong institutions. So peace, justice, and strong institutions are very important to have actually a social balance uh, in the human society. So as a social life, as a social animal. We are very much uh, actually responsible to create such institutions, such actually practices, which actually uh, give rise and uh, support to our like a, a, a peace, justice, and such like a value system in our society. Otherwise, uh, it may start like it may go back to the older times where there was actually in the absence of like a, such value systems, there used to be a lot of wars and uh, uh, different kind of like a, uh, negative events. So one must not actually we learn from the history and uh, work for improvement of such value systems for the present and the future. And the last one it talks about like partnerships for the goal. So one cannot actually uh, achieve 
such goals independently okay one is not able to uh, one is not actually strengthened and empowered to do such a, to take up such a like a herculean, herculean task at the global level and accomplish so we need like a, everyone's like a uh, cooperation and hands uh, friendship and uh, this uh, this thing to as a whole to combine and uh, uh, achieve uh, these uh, stages so uh, well, and then we see like these uh, dominant mental map of, uh, you know, relating SDGs to sustainability elements. So how is it happening? If you see like uh, this uh, uh, graph over here, so this talks about uh, like uh, these uh, three aspects like a uh, social, environmental and economic over here. So on these, if you see SDGs are shown as points like a uh, water is uh, one like a uh, SDG element. Uh, this consumption is one SDG element, energy is one you know land climate oceans you know these cities partnerships hunger health you know poverty education growth equality gender peace you know infrastructure all of these are like a union sdgs point which we just saw in the previous slide and uh, sustainability elements uh, are shown as the arrows over here you see here this arrow this arrow this arrow this arrow Okay, so they are actually, uh, if you see, some of these SDGs are actually overlapping between uh, like a, some, uh, like a sustainability, like a element, so some, uh, sustainability aspects. For example, energy is common between here, uh, between these two. Okay, so this, uh, this actually gives us a mental map of relating like SDGs, which one falls where. So from here, actually, we can uh, devise our like action points. Okay to move forward with our like objectives which we derived from the like a previous site so with these actually seven uh, 17 U, uh, un sdgs okay we must work out actually action points and start working okay okay in these three actually aspects of like a esc aspects of sustainability okay so that we can uh, deal with the given situation in a uh, respectable way so that is the actually whole idea of uh, uh, this uh, actually uh, studies uh, of like uh, sustainability science actually these days so let me show some uh, some uh, like a uh, novel efforts which are uh, being taken up uh, across the world and how much they are faring okay so this uh, actually slide uh, talks about like if you see this city Zurich okay so this city of Zurich has uh, taken a position of like a one okay and it leads the way on urban sustainability Okay, so in terms of like urban sustainability, Juris has become a, a, a role model in today's context. Uh, uh, bifurcation of these EAC aspects, you can see like the people, planet, and uh, profit. So uh, on the people front, uh, it has received like a 27. Okay, on the planet front, it has received one. On the uh, profit front, it has received like a, a five. So as a, a combination of these, Okay, it is uh, kept at number one position. The second one comes Singapore. So in Asian cities, in the Asian like a uh, uh, continent, okay, Singapore is leading the uh, this actually uh, the, the the pace of like a such a responsible actually uh, development. Okay, which is the sustainable development model. The next ones uh, there are several like cities like London, Amsterdam. You know Hong Kong, Sydney, New York, and several other. So you can uh, you can visit to get the details. Like what are the kind of efforts being made in different cities in the different countries? Okay, in what ways they are dealing with the like a sustainable development? How they are handling it? And it is very interesting to actually draw insights. The kind of effort like you may be all aware of like a city of like Amsterdam. How do they support the activity of like a cycling? So the prime minister of the that country himself used to actually cycle to his office how amazing is that okay we do not generally see like a such efforts uh, persistent efforts on a daily basis you know coming from like a different world leaders because for as a token uh, gestures they may cycle or they may take a metro like a one or two days okay but they don't do it regularly well uh, for, uh, it has like a several uh, reasons for uh, for them to not to go for like a such thing but yes a consistent and uh, you know uh, a regular like a practice okay can bring a change you know uh, which could be taken as a, like you know a green effort in this thing. so Amsterdam is very uh, friendly for the like a cyclists cyclists and uh, the the local uh, traffic laws and regulations they give actually preference to the pedestrians and cyclists so the, the, this is also protected by the act of law like uh, this, the cyclist will be given a dedicated track 
you know uh, the the uh, the safety and uh, you know security of them while riding and uh, while uh, parking their uh, cycles at different places uh, stations you know buildings and so such infrastructure such supportive infrastructure is actually designed and provided to them so it's a, it's a holistic approach you know which supports this noble cause and it's not possible without that so that holistic approach is very important so yes maybe you can uh, read uh, further about uh, the uh, different sustainable efforts being made across the world okay and uh, yeah in this one here it talks about like uh, how the calorie demand like a uh, uh, like food okay of the humans has uh, going to increase in the next like a uh, uh, few decades so from 2010 to 2050 it is uh, projected that, that there will be a increase of by like a 53% okay and in the land footprint it's going to shrink by 16% so we see a contrast we see a very high contrast over here okay so uh, how this uh, uh, this is going to up and uh, this uh, resources and the land is going to come down so how we will meet actually this demand is the challenge actually okay so we are almost at the end of uh, this portion of uh, this uh, lecture 3 so you can see what 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 comes to your mind by seeing just picture uh, this picture don't look at the text okay it looks like a very beautiful uh, uh, a piece of like a, a photography okay this actually picture uh, is a image from like a satellite this shows the lithium rich water sitting in the evaporation ponds in the country of like chile the lithium batteries which we generally use in our like today's uh, like every electronics every like a laptops the mobile phones the pads you know most of these uh, guys is bluetooth guys is they carry actually high powered batteries so those batteries are actually powered by lithium ion like battery so lithium has become a new age actually material and an element which is of a very critical uh, importance for uh, our electronics uh, gadget for powering them okay so lithium uh, actually being harvested over there and this satellitization so as in uh, as a like a, uh, you know volunteer uh, assignment to this actually le le lecture maybe you can go uh, go back to your house okay and you can uh, google more about uh, what is lithium and how do they extract and what are the environmental repercussions of like lithium thank you very much